Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. I want to talk to you today about filling a trench. Uh, it is almost September 2020. We're still in COVID by, oh, I don't know, six months. Um, right now I've got my kids and their friend helping us out today, just burying a trench. Uh, so this is our little Kubota. So right here, we're burying power. Well, it's not power yet. It's just a conduit with two coax lines. There's gonna be an ADU building right here. It's just a little apartment above. Oh, let me watch out. Apartment above the garage. And uh, basically that's gonna give us, um, it's gonna be sitting right here. And so I'll discuss with you real quick what we're doing here. Hold on one second. Jason, wait. For this here in Loveland, the transformer is a 25 kVA. It doesn't have to be switched out. It could be a 50 kVA, but they're only going to do 150 amps. If they did 200, they would have been responsible to replace that. Uh, hold on one sec. To replace that transformer. Uh, but they made them go underground. So in Loveland, just so you know, as of January 2020, this now, you have to go underground if you're 125, 150, or 200 amp in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, if it's 100 amp, they'll let you stay above, or if it's just a repair, you, they'll let you stay above. But if you upsize for any reason, you cannot. If you have 70 amps, like some homes in Loveland, you can go up to 100. But this is a trench that was 100 foot. You can see the sewer pipe. They found out the sewer was broken, and so we dug a trench out to about where that yellow flag is right there. And it was about a 100 foot trench, and the sewer guys came in and put theirs. I then put my primary power at three foot with a two and a half inch schedule 40. And then I did the two uh, coax lines, if you will, are gonna be, I think, Comcast. But as you can see, there's another conduit back up here. So my two and a half is my primary to my building, if you will, not primary, but secondary power. Well, let's just say your line into the service and your load back, my service feeders are going in and then my sub feeders coming out to the buildings in a two inch schedule 40, okay? Got a conduit here just to hold it up. In the ground, I have my two ground rods. One and two. And that's gonna be for this building here. It's a two car garage. Okay, we'll keep coming. Everybody say hi. So anyways, right here, guys, is going to be the red tape, or warning tape going in. And then back through here. Why couldn't it be raining? When we originally talked about this with the power company, the power is going to go right here. So see the old service? You cannot have it over that wine cellar stair going down. This building was built 107 years ago. That service right there is coming down so they can actually dig next month the rest of the hole or if you will the footer for the slab it's going to be on slab so we had to fill in here with the irrigation pipe pulled out a wood stump here we also had another pylon sitting here that was for a deck that we had to pull out but we had to dig all this out so they could connect the sewer we thought we were going to go in there we couldn't so we had to take all this dirt that was sitting here put it in dig it out again to put the service get it inspected and put it out Keep in mind, the original building is gonna be on Cleveland and the new building is gonna be on South 12th Street. So we had to have an inspection from Loveland Utilities for our power coming in for them, because we had to put it in with the conduit. They're gonna push the sub feeders and then they are gonna to have to, uh, we have to have a second inspection on the original permit to get so power could go out to that garage. Now coming in here for the power, you can see you couldn't see it now but there was a two foot foundation we had to chip out and I had to use my heat box if you don't have a four foot heat box and a two foot heat box there's no way you're gonna get away with this with Home Depot so you do it yourself people even if the power company lets you bring your power in if you mess it up you got to re-tear it all out and redo it if they can't push through it so I've been doing this 23 years and it takes a lot of practice everybody thinks it's just dirt and pipe it's not there's a lot of secrets and tricks of the trade to do this 
Um, again, we don't allow people to do the trench and put the conduit and then we'll just push the wire. We do it all from beginning to end. I own my own tractor and we bury it, tamper it, everything. So that's gonna be, um, if you're looking for that, you probably have to call another electrical company, not us. But anyway, so we, if you see right here, we put strut right here on the back, inch and five eighths to get it to mount off. And then we've got our mini straps and our slip conduits coming up, our coax line coming in. They wanted two, one for over there, one for here. And this is our three quarter conduit that goes to the shed right there, okay? And then right here, this is our sub feed for our number two going into the basement, okay? This three quarter is gonna feed out right here and pick up that box up there. Then all of this is coming off. Even that inch and a half PVC LB going down in the basement, all of that's coming off. Loveland would not allow any window within three foot to the edge. A lot of old houses have a problem with this. Fort Collins Power, not as picky, but Loveland is stupid picky. So right here, you have to be three to five foot from the edge of it. Edge of the gutter, edge of the house, I don't know. The gutter's attached, so I use that extra two and a half inches. But we are right at about 35 inches, so close enough. Right here coming in, our bypass lever. There feeds 200 amp main single phase. Our two ground rods were buried right here with our inner system bonding bridge bar and our cold water to the basement right here. And I left this strut long enough so I could use a mini strap to connect to this to have at least some sort of strap because I'm not a two foot conduit. That'd be considered a nipple. They really don't include the LB. So as you get too high anyways, you don't want that to wiggle. So I just made that strut strap longer. And all of that's already fed in. And then I gave them some power here. 100 amp feed going to their new building, 100 amp feed going downstairs. Does have to be a four wire SER. And then I gave them a 20 amp over there for the shed. And the extra 15 and 20 amps gonna be this three quarter I already showed you going up. Okay, so as far as the surge protective device, we could do one mounted out here and put it on the main lugs, which I'll probably end up doing because that's new to code two for residential. You have to have a surge protective device of 2020. I just went to my class two weeks ago. There's a lot of changes on that and I'll start trying to look through it again and do some more videos for you guys. But um, for all of you um, guys who are thinking about trying to do your own utilities to an area like this, this was one of the most difficult trenches going look that way that I've ever had to do. We had to put tons of OSB board and pallets here so we could dump the dirt and keep it off of their rock. And then again, I had a dirt mound pile literally with uh, four by four sheets of OSB board right here piled up with dirt this high, five foot high. And we had to pull that back, rebuild that, then pull this back out over here so we could get our service, get it inspected, and then put it back in. Again, two inspections. Last part of this video real quick. If you're thinking about doing this, just to give you a heads up, um, the permit for an ADU here in Loveland was about $10,500 for uh, looking over the prints. Plus you have the engineer drawings, which is usually three to four grand. Then you had 2000 almost $2,000 in the utilities of Loveland to bring in subfeed power, basically nine or 120 foot from that pole down over here. If they would have upgraded it, then you would have ended up spending probably another 3,000 upgrade that transformer from a 25 kVA to a 50 kVA. And then your other neighbors would have benefited later off of it. So as you can see, the fees that were involved and then the sewer was broken and crushed and they didn't know it. Uh, that was quoted thirty dollars to $35,000. Uh, we ended up pulling out this trench for them, all of it. They, you know, we called 811 and all that, and we ended up doing a trench for 10% of that cost just to help them out to get that dug deep enough. And even the sewer company said that the electrical, or the sewer company said that we did a great job as electricians just digging that slope because we started at about um, not quite three foot, maybe 30 inches. And by the time we ended, it was four and a half foot. So definitely a good slope that we did. They've got their clean outs. This orange right here, these two cones are the clean outs for the house. Uh, newer code on that is a sweep going both ways. And so over there you have two sweeps and then you have your first one you can see over here. That's the one that they're dumping into. And 
because there's going to be a couple bathrooms. There's a bathroom in the garage and a bathroom upstairs. Um, so, and it's only 750, 700 square foot upstairs. So, so quite a bit to do just to get this in. And we weren't able to move that shed either. So as you can see, go ahead, that shed was quite the ideal issue to get through. Now my little mini X got right through there, 45 inches. I was able to squeeze in the tractor uh, hydraulics, the tracks to get it through there. Um, and I've been through there about seven times. So uh, guys, I just wanna keep in mind that if you're thinking about doing a detached building, uh, the permit fees, the utility fees, uh, and then there was the electrician fees, of course, to rebuild the service. Um, so sometimes service changes are around 3,200 bucks, depending on what that is. But then of course there's feeder wires going backwards to the other building to build a service there too, um, because it is two separate structures that are dwelling units. And a dwelling unit is discussed as uh, somewhere where you eat, sleep, bathe, and live. So in a nutshell, guys, um, yeah, that's just to give you a rough idea of fees that I've been learning about too with Loveland on certain things, because some fees have gone up and everybody's been moving to Colorado, so I'm assuming that's part of the issue. Um, but yeah, if you're considering this, I usually don't try to talk pricing online, and if you're listening to this, please don't get online and be a jerk about the pricing. This is just a lot of their fees. Our fees are uh, not nearly as close as that, um, but then again, you know, we're doing the primary of all this trenching. So anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. We'll look forward to talking to you. See you soon.